encyclopedia for character customization. One of the negatives with the game is that it does not have a boob slider. But the positive to offset that is for most of the female characters, it's already set to max. Hey, what's up guys? My name's Arix and welcome to the world of Lost Ark. In this video, we're gonna be exploring the wide array of character creation and customization options available to you. Because let's be honest, you can't go out into the world if you don't have a badass looking character first. It's a prerequisite. I, I actually have a picture of my character that I, uh, I I took in Lost Ark. I'm gonna show you guys what the what what I look like in Lost Ark. Uh, I tried to make it look like me as much as possible. Uh, see if I can show this. Yeah, um, that's my character. And uh, yeah, I tried to again. I tried to make it as look as much like me uh, as I possibly could. And I think it went. I think it, yeah, I did a did a pretty good job, man. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Rules. I just make the videos. So, where do we begin? Okay. Well, first things first, you're gonna need to select a class. There are 15 classes available at launch, five base classes, the warrior, martial artist, gunner, mage, and assassin, okay. and within those classes are an array of advanced classes. If you wanna know more about which class to pick or which respects. classes might make sense for you, then keep it locked on the channel as there'll be a series of videos on that very topic. But that's for the sake of this at. video, selecting your class will then take you through to the creation options. But for the sake of this video, bro, like this reminds me selecting your class so much as fucking Devil May Cry. Like just this scene, like doesn't this remind you a lot of Dante? Like the fucking super stylized shit. Yeah, it looks more like Nero. I get that. I haven't played the new. Like I, I, I obviously know who he is, right? I've seen a million pictures, but like I really fucking need to play the new Devil May Cry, man. Like I went so hard on Devil May Cry three. I love that game so much will then take you through to the creation options. You'll be presented with your character in a fancy Wait, set that's, of armor. That's this the is your guy. class specific armor. And while it's not the set that you'll begin the game yeah. with, I mean, you have to start with the basic stuff so you can later appreciate all that cool gear. Yeah, that's me. It does give you a that's chance me, to guys. see some of the available options. In the top left, you can then switch mm -hmm. between various armor sets to get a feel for how your hero will look as you progress and in various different get-ups. Additionally, you can also select from an array of actions in case you want to see them doing a little bit more than just standing still. I mean, it's important. You might have the perfect style whilst idle, but what does your character look like while dancing? These are very important questions. Character customization is serious business. But that aside, let's then turn our attention to some of the creation options. Firstly, you I have the choice Ark. of selecting a base to work from. I mean, if you really just want to dive into the game, you can pick a base and just hit go yeah, and you'll be in the world. Yep. But for everyone else that likes to spend a good 10 hours making their character perfect, I'll be then doing consider that. this your foundation, your canvas to paint on. There's uh, I said like, uh, one one thing with me is that like, this is not like, I play. I plan to make progress in the game and pop off and, you know, do all that bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I really, I, I, I'm playing the game to make good content for you guys and to have fun. That's my goal. Like, I'm going to play it the same as I played Final Fantasy. Like, my goal in Final Fantasy was not to beat an ultimate. It was to have fun and make good content. It's the same with New World, too, right? Like, I mean, well, actually, New World, I tried to take that pretty seriously. And, you know, look how that turned out. Variety of bases to choose from, so have a look around and see what works for you. Following this, you can then adjust your face. And again, this comes in two forms. You can keep things simple mm -hmm. with some presets, or you can expand the advanced option and begin tweaking your eyes, oh, yeah. eyebrows, cheeks, oh, yeah. chin, this could be 45 nose, minutes. and mouth. All with an array of sliders for size, angle, position. So you really can sliders. dial in your chosen features. You then have an array of hairstyles to choose from. It's also important to note that different classes have access to different hairstyles, some that suit the look and feel of that class, essentially. But yeah. there's plenty to choose from, and you can pick your color from a color wheel. Plus, if you want to get funky, you can even blend two different tones and adjust the way in which they blend together. Oh, to good. So you can look like Ronald McDonald. That's just what I wanted. It's the same thing as, like, this reminds me a lot of, like, New World, where you see, like, some random guy who's, like, he's just this random fucking dude, and he's got, he just looks like an average guy, and he has this giant green afro just he's it is right there a d d massive green afro get some truly unique looks <laughs> bozos also, yeah those of you asking you can hide your helmet in game so if you're thinking this is all for nothing really if cool. i put a helmet on fear not the world can see your beautiful face I, uh, 
Yo, I Following this, that. you yeah, then yeah, have your eye customization options, and here you can make changes together or separately. Okay. So if you want to go for that anime villain aesthetic, yes. one with, say, a dark black eye and a red iris, yes. you can do just that. You can also adjust yeah, I'm gonna, your wrinkles if you I'm want. I'm going to make my character look as fucking badass as possible. Some aged wisdom and the shine and intensity on your skin or even your freckles. There's lots of options, as you can see. Yeah. And then we get onto the final section, the makeup. At the basic level, like me? you can apply yeah, this yeah. to your eyes, eyebrows, cheeks, and lips. But below that, you have tattoos in various categories. Some of them are fixed, some of them will take up your entire face, and some are smaller and can be moved around. Again, I really like that. Like, that's super cool. I wish that, like, more games had this level of customization. I, I feel like, as I said before, is that, uh, the best customization for, like, any game is, like, yeah, this guy, he's going down to the gathering of the Juggalos, okay? Like, yeah, his, uh, his main weapon is a fucking bottle of Fago and a, <laughs> and a knife. <laughs> or, sorry, a, a, a meat cleaver. And, um, yeah, anyway, uh, this is just... I, I, I think, like, BDO has, like, the best uh, customization, right? That 100% does. But on top of that, there's so, so many other games that have good customization. And I'm glad that Lost Ark has all these, like, crazy cool options. Allowing you to truly create a unique hero. They even have some beards under the extras option. Sadly, no giant Viking beards fit for a Norse god, but still some good options to choose yeah, from. Yeah, I know. And of I was course, very these will be based on uh, your hair color as well. Don't forget, you can also save your presets. Uh -huh. So if you want to test out different characters and options and then return later without having to make everything all over again, you can do just that. Once That's you're cool. happy though, give yourself a name and dive into the world. The intro for the game is really cool. As you explore Arcasia, you'll obtain new gear, which will change the way you look, as well as bolstering your stats. And if you feel like it, there's even a store you can dive into if you want some spicy cosmetic items. But for now, <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's a look <coughs> at some of the available customization options in Lost Ark. <coughs> Again, don't forget, if you want more details, you can click the link in the description box down below. And of course, keep it locked for plenty more. That is cool, dude. Oh my god. That's badass. Yeah, character customization, everything is fucking awesome, right? It's definitely awesome. Uh, I like it a lot. I, I just want to mention that uh, Austin right now has a, a boil warning. So a lot of the places are no longer, they're not supposed to serve you. Uh, you, you can't buy a fountain drink anywhere so i had to go to like one of the mo this is like an advantage of living in, in basically the ghetto right it is that <laughs> the fucking stores here don't care <laughs> they don't care i i just <laughs> i got a fountain drink it's fucking fine <laughs> yeah okay so uh it's fucking a boil warning sounds like east austin look dude it is what it is man yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, you shouldn't let, you're gonna be shitting later, boy? Nah, I'll be fine, man. Now, are the classes gender locked? So the classes are gender locked, but they are adding in other classes in the future, I think, or in some way. that are kind of like the male version or the female version of those classes. Yeah, it's like BDO then? I, I guess so. That's cringe? Uh, I mean, here's the thing. I, I think so, okay? I don't want to play as a girl character. I, I want to play as a I, well, listen. The the warrior aesthetic to me is Conan the Barbarian. All right, Conan the motherfucking Barbarian. That's what we're going for. So I'm not trying to play as some girl or anything like that. I want to play as a big, buff, massive fucking dude with a gigantic sword and maybe also a shield. That's it. So hopefully they do add that. Like in PoE, right? I have to play as a girl character because like a fucking witch is just like insane. And uh, a lot of my builds are, are end up being witch builds. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Let's watch the end game. What's video. going on, everyone? Welcome. Why? Back. Why am I? Why am I getting closed captions for? Why is French? Why? Why? Why is French the, my main one? Okay, gotta have the big dick sword. Yeah, exactly. Google Lost Ark Berserker female. Sure, I'm gonna look that up off stream. Uh, actually, I'm gonna look that up on a private window. Yeah, it's only one picture. But yeah, she's hot. 
So today we're going to be taking a close look at some of the numerous PVE activities and things yeah. to do in Lost Ark. This video is sponsored by Amazon. They wanted me to give you a bit of a rundown for this particular aspect of the game, and I'll be doing just that, uh, focusing exclusively on some of the PVE stuff you'll be doing, which includes things like dungeons, raids, and your island estate known as the Stronghold. So if you're just yeah. getting started with the game for the very first time, or you want a bit of a refresher hopefully you will find this video useful so here's a basic rundown of each of these things starting us off is chaos dungeons now this is the primary starting point in the gearing up process and what you'll likely want to do first thing once you unlock it chaos dungeons take you through these three separate stages where you have to fight back waves of enemies okay. now these will take place Makes in differing sense. locations as you unlock the higher tiers with different types of enemies on them mm -hmm. But fundamentally, it's all kind of the same thing. You will see groups of enemies, you will smash those enemies, and you want to try to do it fast. Uh, you simply it have to sense. beat a five-minute timer on each stage to progress on to the next one. Now, like okay. I said, Chaos Dungeons drop that base level gear, and this is what you'll be starting out in that post-50 endgame gearing process. So is this almost like the Proving Grounds in WoW? Like, I, I don't know if that's a good comparison or not. But is it kind of like that? Uh, except you get gear. No, it's not. They're like rifts. Oh, they're like Diablo 3 rifts. Okay, okay. All right, that makes sense. Not only do they drop the gear, they also drop the resources needed to upgrade that gear, as well as accessories and a handful of other useful items, which is pretty much the case for all of the endgame PvE activities. It all drops stuff that you need for some other aspect of the game. On average, a Chaos Dungeon takes roughly 5 to 10 minutes to finish. Damn, These can be fast. done twice a day, and you can do them solo or in a group. And just in general, okay, you will cool. want to do the highest level of these that you have unlocked and can actually... If you fail it can you do it again so like let's say you fuck it up does th is that one of your chances patch notes for lost ark yeah but like what do i know about the patch notes like i could look at it but like i don't know what i'm reading do i complete as the higher level you do the better the rewards okay so the next major type of content are known as guardian raids and these are actually really similar to monster hunter battles you're dropped in on a map and must search around the various zones <laughs> looking for the boss in fact there's even a flare item in okay. the game which will okay. temporarily yeah, show it. you the location of the boss now when you find it you and your team have to just try to take it out before the timer expires and yeah that's it it's basically just a big old boss fight. Um, typically these That's bosses cool. will have several large Simple. telegraphed attacks and they'll also go through phases as you take down their health. Now ideally you will eventually want to learn the different phases and telegraph attacks of the boss so you can know what's coming and when to dodge. That uh, would especially make sense. since getting hit with these can incapacitate you for some time <laughs> which will open you up to taking lots of damage. Now occasionally there will be some trash mobs uh, in the area but for the most part it is just a time trial boss clear essentially it's like a and final these fantasy can be raid, then. quite tough much. Uh, because there are several restrictions put in place for one the game limits the number of times you and your team can revive along with oh, the consumables that okay. you can use so really you do have okay. to try to play carefully try to avoid damage and especially try not to die like chaos dungeons yeah, guardian sense. raids should be done twice a day they reward accessories and other useful items like gems cards books mm -hmm. and runes most importantly though is that they drop upgrade materials that are not bound to your character meaning that you can send them off to an alt or even sell them on the auction house to get some gold which is primarily what makes doing guardian raids so valuable uh, one of my favorite end game activities though is the tower this is a solo challenge activity where you have to basically climb the floors of a tower oh, these will get progressively I've... harder and grant you better uh, rewards so you'll start out here on before. floor one you're given uh -huh. some objective normally kill groups of enemies or a specific enemy or boss and then if you complete that within the set time limit you will grant the reward and then unlock the next floor cool. so on and so on so for example in my most recent run i entered floor one they asked me uh -huh. to destroy a stone as a reward i got this deck of cards and then i went on to floor two where i had to destroy these hordes of enemies that it gave me another deck of cards floor three asked me to defeat a named enemy for the deck of cards for floor 
four, asks me to defeat large groups of enemies, another deck of cards, and then finally on floor five, I had to defeat a boss, and as a result, I got this proficiency potion. So it basically continues this way. You'll get rewards every time you clear a floor, you'll unlock the next one, and usually that fifth floor is going to give a unique and most of the time more valuable reward. The Isn't climb Torcast continues and as you too? do, it gets more difficult, even requiring higher item levels in order to complete them. Um, but one of the major reasons to run these towers is that it gives you these skill point potions as a reward. And you basically need these extra skill points to max out your skill trees as just hitting level 50 doesn't cut it. You still okay. ha need more skill points to max out the abilities that you're using. The next- Yeah, apparently like leveling up your skill tree and like there's actually a cap of 60 and not 50 so it yeah just do the content yeah uh oh uh, i i don't like that i don't know i mean like the thing is like i'm gonna go into the game with an open mind and i'm just going to play the game and if it sucks and there's something annoying about it then i will give my feedback on if there if it sucks and there's something annoying about it uh, i don't know enough about it to really determine just off the top of my head oh this is gonna be bad or oh this is gonna be good because like the game is like its own separate system does that make sense major type of pv content you'll be doing are abyssal dungeons these are basically just harder end game versions of the types of dungeons that you encounter while leveling up. Okay. Now, for each of these activities that we've talked about so far, the Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids, Tower, and Abyssal Dungeons, right. you are doing all of this to collect gear, accessories, yeah. currencies, materials, and a plethora of other useful of items shit. for character progression. Also, for most of these, as you progress and get higher item level by upgrading your gear, you then unlock access access to higher tiered versions of each of these. Your okay. gear progresses, you get to do harder versions Makes of sense. each yeah, of yeah, these yeah. activities, typical, which gives you typical better MMO gear stuff. to upgrade, unlocking harder versions of those activities, and that process continues. That is basically the, the, the ladder that you climb, the gear treadmill yeah. in Lost Ark. Other PvE content in Number the game goes comes up. in the form of these world events. Uh, these include things like chaos gates, field bosses, adventure islands, ghost ships and a variety of other just world activities that you can do and that becomes periodically available throughout the course of any given day. In fact, there's an in-game tracker that's located in the upper left-hand corner of the UI that shows you exactly what events are currently active and what events are coming up. It shows you where the event is located as well as the rewards that they give. So depending on what type of resources or currencies that you're after at any given time, like, you know, what aspect of the game are you focused on progressing and trying to acquire these things for that is going to inform which of these world events and activities that you want to participate in i also want to briefly touch on the sailing and estate or stronghold systems so first off sailing uh you unlock this around level 35 roughly halfway this to me like the sailing part i don't know why but like the sailing thing is just so cool to me like and it's not just anything about oh well it's so cool in this game like i just think it's cool in every game i, I don't know why i just i think it's just really cool like that's why i was hoping that, like new world would have that i always asked about at ashes of creation i you know island expeditions and bfa it's like what oh my god you're gonna be able to sail around no no, it's not. It's not really. It's not really what happened. But um, you know, was, the idea was really cool through the leveling process. Initially, you just use it to travel to the different continents, but later on and in the end game, there are just a host of other activities and things to do that are associated with sailing. Uh, most of the game's map, in fact, is uh, consists of this giant ocean, and that ocean is dotted with various islands all over the place. So you're going to oh, sail around the going seeds. to these islands, and they basically function as just additional locations to get quests that reward currencies and resources. Okay. And then there's also the stronghold system, System. The, this is basically instance player housing. You can add items to it to like decorate the island, so you can set up like a bed. And it's so it's not like in Final Fantasy where like there's only so many people that can have a house. So like basically everybody can get a house in Lost Dark. Is that right? Yeah. So e everybody can just get a house. That's crazy. Okay. So yeah, like in Final Fantasy, you can't really do it the same way. 
only some chair in different locations like really expensive and stuff like and that. There's a cosmetic rare. aspect, but it also serves a, a functional purpose, at letting you unlock various upgrades you can make and potions. forms of yeah, progression. I heard about this. this comes from a few different aspects. First, there is the laboratory. This is where you get a lot of upgrades and progression for your stronghold specifically. The research for this is done here. Things like development of the manor, expedition storage, uh, opening up different regions and cells, building development, unlocking new recipes and blueprints, and a host of other things are all done at the laboratory. And for the most part, these require wood and ore that you will be uh, acquiring through gathering. Next is the workshop, and this is essentially the game's crafting system. Okay. Here you can make potions, bombs, grenades, armor. capes, and a host of other useful items. For the most part, these require herbs and mushrooms that you herbs. get while gathering. And then lastly oh, no. is the headquarter system. And this is basically a sailing themed quest system. You basically have followers that you uh, acquire, go out and complete these tasks. Uh, they will reward I've been you here with various before. resources and items. Yep. And you can turn some of this yeah, stuff I've been in here to before. get other okay, items in got the game. It. That's really what this game is. A lot of different currencies and items that you're collecting by doing different things. Yeah. And that more... And I've never thought that's a... Like, this is what I always said about the, uh, about the mission table, right? is that I don't think the mission table is bad. What was bad is the mission table being required. The mission table itself is totally fucking fine. Who gives a shit? But whenever you have to do it, that sucks. Or less does it for this video, a look at some of the basic end game systems mm -hmm. in the game. What's really interesting though is that this is really just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the PvE and the end game. There are a host of other things that you will unlock and gain access to. And as we move through the various tiers and updates in Lost Ark, because remember, this is a game that's already launched in other regions, we're going to start off with a base version. We're going to have access to these core systems that I talked about here in this video, but more and more stuff will be coming out over time. But even more so, more and more stuff becomes available as you progress your character and upgrade your gear getting that higher item level and unlocking higher tiers of stuff decent enough video uh this is mainly like what they primarily talked about was uh pve stuff and you know you guys know i'm mainly a pve andy right that that's mainly my thing that's what i like doing and uh barely scratch the surface yeah and like that's what i think is so crazy about it is like all of these videos still are just like a, a fraction of like what they all went over in the uh the main video so let's go back over we're gonna look at sailing all right so as i said before sailing is one of the main things that i'm excited about director trailer has all of this yeah i know but like it'll probably have a little bit more information uh about it in each one yeah that's what i'm kind of guessing Hello everybody, my name is Nagura and today I got a handy guide for you about sailing in Lost Ark. The team over at Amazon Games have sponsored me to create this video, so big shout out the to them French and subtitles let's get straight again. into it. Oh my There's God. quite a lot to talk about when it comes to sailing in Lost Ark, but I will only go over the basics today to give you an overview of what you can expect. The first time you will encounter... I'm glad to see a lot of the uh, the WoW players like Nagura, uh, Preach Gaming, Pyromancer, and uh, like those are just the top three that come off the top, the three that come off the top of my head. I, uh, I'm really glad to see them moving out and like doing other games and being successful at it. Like Bellior, Stoops, there's another one, right? It, it's a really great thing because like for the longest time, like being a WoW streamer was only being a WoW streamer and that's all it was ever going to be. But the fact is, like, I mean, even, like, Tally, for an example, like, Tally's going and streaming other games and doing great. I think that's awesome. Uh, I'm really glad to see that happening. Uh, yeah, and, and Asmogold, yeah, imagine that. Yeah, look at El Shokus, right? <laughs> Fucking starts, stops streaming WoW, goes over to Minecraft, gets 1.2 million viewers. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> yeah, no problem there, boys. I, I still can't believe it. I think that's so cool, man. I, I, uh, I was talking with some, uh, some friends about that the other day. Sailing will be after level 35 in East Lutera at Wave Strand Port. If you follow the main storyline, it will lead you there so you don't have okay. to worry about missing it. Sailing is a requirement to travel between continents because the fast traveling system, also known as the triports, only work within the same continent. Okay. So in theory, you can use sailing exclusively for that purpose. 
However, if you want to go a little bit further with your sailing, it could be a satisfying solo play experience, as well as a way to give you more endgame rewards later on. For example, there are various islands you can only reach with sailing in Lost Ark. So you they sail around their... instead of having the, uh, okay, satisfying solo play. Yeah, that's what really matters a lot. Uh, absolutely. Uh, she's reading it? Yeah, she's probably reading it off of a script because she wrote the script ahead of time so she'd know what to say. Bellior does the same thing. Uh, almost every YouTube uh, content creator that's not on camera, and some of them do it off of that, is like, uh, yeah, they almost always script out their videos to a certain extent. Like, I, I scripted out a lot of my old videos too. Uh, that's not a bad thing. I, I, I know that... You know, and, and like this is one of the unfortunate things whenever we have uh, a female on screen, people make weird comments about their appearance. Some of the comments are harmless, some of them are patronizing or negative or, or just just weird, right? It would just probably make someone uncomfortable. Let, let's let's just stop doing that. like just just don't don't do that. Just remember that whenever you do that, who looks like an asshole? Me. I look like the asshole because you're in my chat doing it. Stop making me look bad by being fucking weird. Own unique quests and intriguing NPCs, and by completing certain activities related to the islands you are visiting, you will be able to collect valuables such as island hearts, which you can then exchange for cool rewards. Okay. So let's get started and set you up with the seven seas of sailing. What's... Number one, collection. Oh, I thought it was sailing was the first one. There are one. eight different classes of ship with different base stats and Okay, let's see here. This one is by far the fucking coolest. It's literally got drills in it. And I would say this one's like second coolest. You can also upgrade your ships, enhancing those attributes even further. The attributes give you a variety of different bonuses, including mm -hmm. sailing speed, more durability for your ship, and all sorts of resistances. This will help you with the more hazardous waters of Arcacia, as some areas will be invaded by sirens or underwater algae, while others That's will have cool. you facing severe storms. To safely Wait, navigate- So like if you if you sail your ship into like an iceberg or some shit like that, d does that matter or is it just like is it just like walking into a wall? It takes damage? Oh fuck! Those you'll have to choose the correct ship in your collection oh and pick God. out the right crew with the right attributes and skills. Jesus. This brings us to our next C. The sailor. crew. Okay, Every ship has a crew. You will be able to carry more sailors with an upgraded ship. Each sailor comes with different stats, which is another way for you to tailor your ship for more specific needs. Okay, so this is like its own little mini game. Oh my God. I, I wonder how much this really matters. So for me, like, I, this is the way that I handle systems like this. I wait for somebody else to handle a system like this, and they say, use these three guys, and I'm like, boom, right there, soft. I use those three guys, and uh, that's it. Done. Some sailing yeah. crews, for example, the Black Fem, soft. even have special abilities. The main way to acquire sailors is by exchanging mm -hmm. a specific ocean currency, but I will go into more detail about that later on. Number three, Sailing. customize. Oh. Now you've okay. got your ship and your crew, the most important thing before you set off is looking good. Yes. You can change the color of your sail or even unlock full reskins for a ship. Holy Number shit. four, currency. The currency you need to upgrade your ship and your crew is called pirate. I'm not sure exactly like how exciting changing the sails and everything would be, but I am kind of interested to see what some of the stuff for changing the entire ship skin would be. I think that would look really cool. Ship skin comp? Yeah, I think that's cool. Coins. Pirate coins can be obtained through different kinds of activities during sailing. There are also various other coins you can obtain during sailing, mm -hmm. but ultimately they can all be exchanged for pirate coins. Okay. You will find trading ships in each port where you can exchange your coins. So how do you get your hands on these coins and currencies? The answer to this is in the next point. Number five, S sailing. cargo, carp, and caches. Wait. You okay. will be able to sail wherever okay. you want on the open ocean and find mainly four different kinds of activities to do. That's, Fishing, that's three C's. Recovering cargo, hunting for treasure, 
and exploring sunken ships. Okay. All of the tasks are marked on the minimap so you can sail there and explore it. Number six, contest. Sa there are also timed sailing events. You can see the events what? by clicking on the clock in the top left of your screen, then click on the cogwheel and go to sailing. Wow. The sailing events take place in specific. So these are all of the different daily events that are happening on that day. Like, cause I remember people mentioned chaos bolt, uh, sorry, chaos bolt, uh, chaos gate before. Holy shit. That is a lot of stuff, man. That is a lot of fucking stuff. This makes the game so big. Yeah, it does. Places and just require you to sail there during the time of the event. Once you get there, you have to complete four mini games similar to the four ocean tasks I mentioned mm -hmm. before. And you will be able to get rewarded with different kinds of sailing coins. And those coins can be exchanged for pirate coins or other rewards. Number seven, sailing. care. Ships also Never have mind. health, displayed in the middle of your oh, sailing interface. Oh, wow. The health periodically goes down while you're sailing, and you should make sure to reach a dock before it reaches zero. If you don't repair huh. your ship before it reaches zero durability, it will become much more expensive to fix, take more time, and be unusable until it's fully repaired. Oh. If your ship isn't well okay. suited for certain terrain, it will lose strength much quicker, so keep that in mind when sailing in dangerous waters. There's a red bar filling up to the right side of your sailing interface while sailing in dangerous terrain. Oh, it's if the it red one. If it fills up all the way, your ship will lose a big chunk of health. So keep that in mind. Tip, if you want to travel to an area and completely avoid those hazardous areas, you can manually set checkpoints and your ship will auto path to each checkpoint. Oh, they have this in BDO. Completely avoiding any dangerous waters. So you make your own flight path. I hope this guide helped you and you're ready to explore the open world. Oh, wait, what the fuck? So you can actually do like multiple. Oh my God. So it's not just like a one to one. You can go one, two, three, four. It's yeah, it's Google Maps. I hope this guide helped you and you're ready to explore the open world of Lost Ark. Goodbye. Okay. I still, I'm, I'm really excited about the, uh, about the sailing shit, man. I really am. Yeah, I, I am so fucking excited. It's gonna be good, boys. It's gonna be pretty fucking good. All right, let's go back over. We're gonna try and look at the PvP one. After that, we're gonna look at all the different classes that you guys asked me to look at, okay? So let's take a look at the PvP video. Tomorrow's gonna be dope. Yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty exciting, man. Like, obvious, to be honest with you guys, I thought the game was coming out on Wednesday. Yeah, the first time I found out that it was coming out today was actually today. What are your plans to servers? I'll go over my own personal plans after we go through all the videos, okay? Hey, what's up guys? My name is Arix and welcome to the world of Lost Ark. Okay. Arcasia awaits, a world full of mysteries, monsters, dungeons, demons, epic adventures, open oceans, and even proving grounds to challenge your fellow adventurers. And therein lies the reason behind this video. Today, we're talking PvP, or player versus player. Essentially, Good. when you want to break from saving the land of Arcasia from demons and instead want to test your skills against other players, then Lost Ark has an array of PvP offerings to keep you busy. See, like, here's the thing. I'm fucking dog shit at PvP. Uh, I just am. Um, I will probably try PvP in Lost Ark, but to be completely honest, I will probably just make an ass of myself and uh, just not not probably do it that much. Uh, I'll see what it's like though. So let's dive in. Okay. I also want to give a quick shout out to Amazon for very kindly sponsoring this video. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about Lost Ark, you can also click the link in the description box down below. So where do we begin? Well, first things first, PvP isn't something you'll be doing from the very beginning of the game. I mean, first you'll need to make a character, level up a bit, unlock some skills, get a feel for your tripod system, and really just get a better understanding of how your chosen class plays. Makes sense. During these early stages, if you want to, you can have friendly duels with other players or your friends whilst out and about, giving you a very oh, it early shows taste the dueling of area. PvP. That's cool. But in terms of actual structured PvP matches in arenas and the ability to earn ranks and rewards, that comes later. Okay. Level 26 to be precise. When you hit it's not level really 26, that long. This... Wait, can't you hit level 50 really fucking fast? I I'm kind of assuming that like most people are going to hit 50 in one day, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's the first time you'll be able to take part in actual PvP matches, not just duels with your buddies. 
In order to unlock this, when you reach Lutera Castle, you'll be able to complete a questline, and as part of the rebuilding Lutera questline, you'll be sent to the Proving Grounds. The NPC will give you a rundown on the different modes, and then following this, you'll be able to access the various PvP modes from the Bounty Board. It's also worth noting that each major city has its own Bounty Board, so PvP is not tied exclusively to Lutera Castle. You can do it from a variety of locations, including your minimap. Oh, that's good. But what exactly are these yeah, modes? It, it's like well, having to go somewhere to do the PvP. Like, it, it's kind of cool, right? Everybody's, like, at the Battle Masters or something like that in, in WoW. Like, there are some positives, but it's also kind of annoying. Like, there's a big part of it that it's just kind of annoying. 50 soft cap, yeah. So, 60 is the max level, and 50 is the soft cap level. It, it's kind of like BDO where whenever it came out originally 50 was the soft cap and then it was like getting from 50 to 51 took you almost as long as getting from 1 to 50. Six, and I think BDO is now 60 is pretty much the soft cap but I'm not sure. I haven't played in a long time. Well much like you expect from any good PvP setup you have normals, yeah. competitive matches and even custom games if you want to practice against friends and just get a feel oh, for Oh shit so I can actually do a tournament You will need to begin by this. doing normal PvP matches in order to unlock ranked so use wow. this as an opportunity to get familiar with the modes, test different setups and learn what works best for you. Dude Once that would be really cool. Once ranked matches are unlocked you can then begin your competitive quest. In ranked matches- Bro so like if I did a tournament for uh, Lost Ark PvP Holy shit, so if, if I did one of those, like, I would want to do a tournament within, like, two weeks of the game coming out. Like, I would want to do it at, like, the highest amount of hype and excitement of the game. Like, a big dick tournament. So, if we were able to set this up, it would have to be 3v3. Alright, give me, like, five days. Like, we have our, our, our actually, we have an OTK meeting tonight. So, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see how the guys feel about a, uh, a tournament for this. And, uh, 1v1. I feel like 3v3 is the cleanest thing, right? Because I'm assuming 3v3 is the, uh, that, that's like the best, that's like the most balanced. Yeah, that's the most balanced. Gizli manage a best of 32, 33 tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, like, we'll, uh, we'll talk, I'll talk to some of the guys tonight. And we can probably set up a tournament for this really, really fast. Uh, I don't know what we can do about prize money. I, I can put up some of my own money, but I'd rather if we had a sponsor do it for us, okay? ...based into one of seven different leagues, Let's with Grandmaster being the highest. When you it's win your be, matches, if it's my you own money, points, it's gonna be and a, when you lose matches... It's going to be Asmongold's official Lost Ark tournament, prize pool, $7.64 which will buy you an entire meal at Wendy's, minus the drink, because they're like $13 themselves. You lose points, so it's possible to go both up and down ranks. Mm -hmm. There are three main PvP modes for you to experience. These are Team Deathmatch, Deathmatch, and Team Elimination. Team Deathmatch is a 3v3 setup. There is a set time limit, and you battle it out in a small arena. When you die, you can respawn, so the focus here is simply to rack up the most kills possible as a team. You can also duo queue for this mode if you want to dive in with a friend. Your second. I wonder if that's a better way to do it. Because, like, in my opinion, I feel like Arena... I think whenever somebody dies, they should... Like, for a viewer experience, when somebody dies, they should be fucking dead. Because it adds a, um... It, it, it adds, like, fucking... It's like... It, 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 not dead in real life! Shut up, idiot! No, it's just... It's a, it adds tension, tension, stress, which is why I'm not competing, but I love watching it. Option is Deathmatch. This is a free-for-all game type with six players all battling at once. Okay. Much like TDM, you can respawn I've after try this death. Out myself. So again, the primary focus here is just to get as many kills as possible. This mode also has burst windows and orbs for you to collect to aid you in battle. Okay. Then finally, you have Team Elimination. Another 3v3 mode, only this time matches play out as a series of 1v1s. You choose Got who it. fights first on your team, then whoever wins continues on to fight the next enemy until they either win or die and your next teammate subs in. Makes the sense. goal here is simply to take out the opposing enemy team and again this mode supports duo queue as well. Outside of these three core modes, competitive PvP also offers seasonal rewards. These can be titles, auras, unique cosmetics, and even effects that you can use to display your prowess to the whole of Arcasia. And there's even a ranking board that you can check out to see where you place in the world too. That's... Now when it comes to... The thing with people that do PvP is you have to have a dick measuring contests in PvP. 
if you don't have dick measuring contests, PvP doesn't matter. Like, cause let's be honest, that's what people do. They want to have the gear so they can be like, look at me, look how good I am, right? You have to have that shit. You need dick measuring contests. And the best way to do that is obviously with a leaderboard. PvP in Lost Ark, all the modes offer a completely level playing field with matches being equalized. In other words, there's nothing that you can bring into the modes to give you a competitive advantage over other players. You need a tape measure. The moment you start, whether you go in at level 26, level 50 or 60, all players receive the same amount of attribute points okay. to spend on six skills and a range of different stats that work for different classes. So like this shit is straight up just like League of Legends. Like if you queue up and you're Draven, because that's the only character I know about at League. I don't, I know Draven and uh, Lady Ahiri and fucking, those are like the two main that I, the, the, the two main ones that I know. Wait, Ahiri, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Okay, then I just know one. Maybe it was from another game. I don't even fucking remember. Yuri? Yeah, I, I don't know. See, I don't I don't play League. But yeah, I know Draven. That's basically the only one, okay? Oh, oh and Miss Fortune, because that's the one that Izzy would main. And uh, yeah, those are the only two characters I know in the game. Basically, like in, in League, it doesn't matter if you're the you're playing the game the first time or you played for five years, you're playing the same character effectively. Like you don't have any advantages for like having a higher level uh, going into the match. So, I feel like this is pretty much the same thing. Uh, everything's straight up equalized. The freedom to spend points and tweak skills is also a great opportunity to just get a feel for what your class can do. Keep in mind that the tripod system in Lost Ark gives you ways to augment your skills and abilities. This is something you will experience as you level up. But also keep in mind some skills and tripods are better suited for PvE, meanwhile others are better suited for PvP. Makes sense. Fortunately, when accessing the Proving Grounds, you have access to the Book of Coordination. This allows you to make different presets of skills and setups so that when you load into your chosen game mode, you can very easily pick your book with your relevant setup and dive right into the action, making the whole process very smooth. Something else worth Great. noting is that while this is obviously a PvP mode, once you're level 60, you can also earn Coins of Courage, which can later be exchanged for PvE items such as cosmetic rewards or even high level crafting gear. So essentially, Playing PvP matches can later feed back into your PvE experience, making it a really nice complement to your adventure. So you still, but it, it basically you, just like gives you a reason to do it outside of that. Yeah, you know, like cosmetics, everything like that. That's great. Dr. Pepper runs through your veins. True. You should now begin to see, Lost Ark has a ton of stuff for you to experience. And for those of you that like to be a little bit more competitive, PvP is a fantastic way for you to scratch that itch. Ranked is so lucky, so no boosting. A balanced playing field that welcomes all skill levels. Yeah, I'm ranked not, matches I'm never gonna if get you these want rewards. to really see what you can do, and badass rewards to earn. So make sure you give it a try when you reach Lutera Castle. So there you have it. That's a look at PvP in Lost Ark. Again, don't forget if you want more details, you can click the link in the description box down below, and of course, keep it locked for plenty more. So do they have like seasons? You know how like WoW has like season one, two, three, and they have like exclusive rewards for each one? Oh, they do? Okay, cool. So then I can feel bad about not getting the rewards like every three months or so. That's great. What an exciting time for, for me to be here. I think a lot of you guys probably don't know about this, but uh, Sierra and I played GeoGisser. And uh, you guys can go ahead. Your hair looks so good. Yeah, that's why I kept the hat on. And so you guys can go ahead and watch that uh, that YouTube video as well. Give it some support. Uh, you know, obviously our editors and everything like that. They, uh, you know, put, put, you should do GeoGuessr on stream. Yeah, I might do it a little bit more. And uh, Sierra and I might do another episode. Depends on how much people like it.